Hello, I'm Leonard Maltin. Star Wars may have started out as a mere movie, but it became a phenomenon. It changed the way movies were made, perceived, and marketed. It ushered in a new era of science fiction and fantasy, and developed a whole new vocabulary of visual special effects. And the man who created the film, who imagined it, and then realized it, is here with us today to share some of his memories, George Lucas. George, if I asked you to sum up your feelings today, looking back at the whole Star Wars experience, if I asked you to sum that up in one word, what word first comes to mind? If there's anything the Star Wars experience has been for me, it's unpredictable. You know, not only in the making of the movies and, and in creating the stories in the first place, which is the fun of it, is because you don't know where it's going to go, and the making of them were a huge adventure. But uh, the success, all the stuff that's come after it and everything is just, you, know, you have no idea what's going to happen next. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. What was the beginning? I would say probably the original impetus for the whole thing was, I used to watch it, uh, the serial on television called Adventure Theater, and they had uh, Flash Gordon, Conquest of the Universe on it, and I used to love that. So I went off and wrote my own space opera. Uh, and uh, developed the story and took it to uh, United Artists that had the first rights to it. They said no, they didn't want it. And I took it to Universal because I just finished American Graffiti and they said no, they didn't want it. And uh, finally took it to 20th Century Fox. And uh, Al Knight Jr. said, I'm interested. He said, I don't understand this. But I loved American Graffiti and whatever you do is okay with me. Because otherwise I don't think it would have ever gotten done. Because it was crazy. You know, you know, spaceships and Wookiees and robots. And it was just unlike anything that had ever been seen before. Tell me about that first script. Now, did you try to tell the whole story in one script? Well, at that point, it wasn't the whole story. I was I wrote a script, and the script was um, very ambitious. It told a very large story. Uh, and um, when I finished it, I realized that it was way too big to make into a movie. So I took the first part of it, sort of the first act, and I said, I'll make the movie about this, and I had to expand on it, move it around, play with it a little bit, but I basically then focused on that as being the film, and I said, someday, if I ever get a chance, maybe I'll make these other things, the rest of it, the other two-thirds into a movie, but right now, that's just going to go on the shelf, and I'll leave it there, and uh, so that's really how the first project came to pass. The other part of it is, is in order to write that first script, I had to write a backstory about where Darth Vader came from, uh, how the kids evolved, you know, his wife, uh, how, how Ben related to all that, how the Emperor came to power, and that ended up being the basis for the projects that I'm working on now. You have a go-ahead on the script. You're revising it as you're preparing now to shoot the movie. How do you begin to prepare to shoot this movie? I went around and there were no departments at the studios, no one to do this. So I had to sort of build up from scratch my own special effects company in the process of starting this whole thing. How do you find people? How do you find the right people to do that kind of thing and to invent things, which is what they had to do? Yeah, there was a small group of people that had done special effects. Uh, some guys had worked in commercials doing the Pillsbury Doughboy and this, you know, so there, you know, there was maybe a few dozen people in Hollywood that actually had some experience. They were mostly college students. They're mostly very young. Uh, I think the average age of ILM when it started was like 24. It's the average age. And so there are a lot of kids that were like 19, 20 years old. Tell me about some of the casting decisions. What I would do is I would take the various contenders for the various roles and I'd mix them around and have them work ensemble. Because what I was trying to do is see how they all look together and work together as a group, not as individuals. Uh, and I think that was a very important part about the casting is that I cast a group. I didn't cast one person, one person, one person. I, I saw how they all worked together and then chose it that way. What was the most serendipitous bit of casting? Probably uh, Harrison. Uh, Fred Roos, who was helping with my casting, was a good friend of Harrison's. And, and uh, so he, he had had him, he was a carpenter, he sort of had him. You know, he'd been an actor and he'd been a contractor and he'd been working as a carpenter, fixing their offices up. And as I was casting everybody, um, we said, well, let's, you know, we'll start doing these tests. And I said, well, you know, we're short one hand solo. You know, I, I've only found four, I need five, because I have five of everything else. And, uh, and so I just said, well, 
comparison? Do you want to do this? You want to stand and sort of read some parts against these other parts so we can get through this thing? And he said, yeah, and he started reading me, read them better than anybody else did. What was the toughest part of making Star Wars? Well, there was a lot of drama through the whole thing. It was a very tough film to make. It was a, it was a fairly low-budget film. You know, it was a $10 million movie uh, at a time when most movies were, the big-time movies were $20, $30 million. How much of that went to effects? Well, about $2 million went to effects. There weren't very many effects. And, and I think the toughest part was when I finished shooting, I came back to the United States, I had no editor, I had to reassemble the entire movie. It would have been cut, start from scratch. I went down to ILM, and they'd spent a million out of the $2 million. Uh, we were about five months away from release of the movie, and they didn't have any shots done. And I was panicked, because I had nothing. I had no movie, I had no effects. I had a big mess on my hands. When did you know it was working, that it was turning into a phenomenon with the public? It was, uh... It wasn't really until it came out and started, it was in the theaters. I was still, even the day it came out, and Laddie called me and said, it's a hit, it's a hit. You know, the first three performances sold out, and it was going to be giant. I said, look, all science fiction and films do well in the first week. Wait until the third week, and then let's see what happens. So I was always the pessimist. I'm sure you know how much Star Wars means to so many, many people around the world. We all appreciate you sharing your memories with us today, George. 